Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about sky replacement and how to create your own library of skies that you can use in Luminar AI. Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Angela Andrew, and today we're talking about creating your own sky library. The reason I want to go over this is one of the coolest things in Luminar AI is our sky replacement tool. And one of the most powerful ways to put that to use is by using your own skies. Let me go ahead and jump into the program and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So up on the screen, I have an image that I captured in Sedona. And the sky that you see there is pretty much what we had the entire trip. Now I was lucky on our first night there, we did get this beautiful sunset. And I thought ahead to capturing at least a couple of shots of the sky that I could maybe use as sky replacements. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to capture skies. To get a better idea of what works well in Luminar AI, we're going to go up to our help menu at the top and into our user guide. And I want to show you this resource because it's something you can go back and refer to over and over again if you need it. I'm going to scroll down to our creative tools and the sky AI tool and go into sky replacement guidelines. Now, if you're using a slower, older computer, you'll probably want to pay attention to some of these image requirements up here. If you are on a new, super fast machine that really exceeds our recommended uh, guidelines, there's a few other settings that I'm going to give to you today that might be helpful for creating even higher quality images. But as far as capturing goes, the things you're going to want to pay attention to is that you're shooting in landscape orientation. You want to make sure you have a straight horizon or that the image is at least straightened so you don't want to have something that's off kilter. You're going to want to make sure that you're photographing only the sky. You don't want to have other things like a piece of mountain or a power pole or something else coming up into your image. You want to make sure you shoot wide. A wide angle shot is going to work better than a long telephoto. It just gives you more pixels to work with and more flexibility in the placement. Um, as I mentioned, you want to avoid telephoto lenses, irregular angles, so make sure that horizon is relatively straight. And you definitely want to have a sense of perspective. So in an image like this, you can see that the clouds appear at the top are actually physically closer to you. The ones out on the horizon appear farther away. And that's something you're not going to get if you shoot straight up into the sky. If you're shooting straight up, those images can work, but they typically don't work as well as something that has perspective. So keeping those things in mind, I created this shot when I was in Sedona. I want to take a moment and say hello to Kevin, Levin, Robert, so glad you're all joining me today. All right, so let's work a little bit on this image that I captured because I want to add this to my sky replacement library. I'm going to begin with our Enhance AI tool. And the key with enhancing your sky images for sky replacement is you don't want to go over the top. You want to bring out their best, but you don't want to over-process them because they will look unnatural in just about every scene. So I'm going to start with my Sky Enhancer and bring that up. And you'll see how that's just kind of popping those colors a little bit and adding a bit more texture to my sky. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go to the Light tool, and I'm going to pull back on my highlights. And look at how much texture that brings back here in the sky. It just looks a lot better, and it's giving us more detail to work with, and it'll look that much better when we pop it into a new image. The next thing I want to do is scroll down to the bottom and take a look at our color harmony. And I'm going to go into the split color warmth and add a little bit of extra warmth to those warm tones. Now this is looking pretty good, but those changes we've made so far have added a little bit of kind of a purple blue tint to those clouds. I want to pull back on that. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top, go to our color tool, and I'm going to go into our HSL and then the saturation. And I'm going to pull back on that blue saturation a bit and the purple. And that just pulls back the color of those clouds and makes it look a lot more natural. So from there, we have a couple of decisions to make. We could keep it at its full size here, but <clears throat> there's not really a lot of interesting stuff going on here at the top of the sky. We also have this little blemish here in the bottom right corner where I actually accidentally captured a little bit of the mountainside. So first things first, I'm gonna crop this 
And just because I think it works best for this image, I'm gonna go into a free aspect ratio here. And I'm gonna pull this down right about there. And I think that looks good because we still have a little bit of detail up here. And we're gonna address this little bottom corner with our erase tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of Composition AI and then jump down to the erase tool, grab my erase brush, make my brush size a little bit bigger with those bracket keys, and then just paint over that little bit of mountain in the corner. So anytime you have a little blemish that's coming up from your original, from the, the foreground in your original scene, you can easily clean that up with your erase tool or in the harder ones you can do with clone and stamp. Don't um, disregard pictures that you've taken that have something sticking up from the foreground in there. Typically those can be corrected and you can still use them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my erase button here and we'll let that work. And that'll get rid of that little piece there in the corner and we're good to go. So now that we have our sky prepared, the next step is to export this. So I'm gonna right click on my image and actually I need to click out of erase first. Give me just a second here. There we go. And now I can go to the right click and choose export. Alrighty. So I'm gonna put this temporarily on my desktop and I'm going to name this Sedona Sunset. Something that is memorable that you're going to know when you look at that file name. Oh yeah, I remember kind of what that is. Um, it also helps to use colors. So you can always use, you know, pink orange sunset or, you know, red sunset or red sunrise, whatever terms make sense to you. So I'm gonna leave sharpening at zero. The reason for that is, is when I do my final image, I will probably add sharpening then. So we don't need to add any sharpening now. I wanna keep this at its original size, so as many pixels as possible. I'm gonna leave my color space at sRGB. And now here's where you have a decision to make. If you're using a slower, older computer, you might wanna export this as a JPEG. But if you have a well-equipped computer, I'm gonna recommend actually saving this as a high quality TIFF, and it's going to give you the best possible quality, especially when working with high resolution files. Um, some people will say that they, you know, if they export a JPEG, they might end up with um, certain artifacts as they continue to process the image once it's in their new, once they've popped that sky into the new image. And that's because sometimes those JPEGs just don't have enough depth and detail to take on that, those kinds of edits. A TIFF version is always gonna be superior, but the trade-off is it takes up more room on your hard drive and it does have a tendency to slow down Luminar AI, especially if you're doing a lot of complicated edits. So just some things to keep in mind. I'm okay with taking up the extra hard drive space and I don't mind waiting a little bit longer for high quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a 16-bit TIFF and choose save. <clears throat> All right, from there, I wanna switch over once this finish, finishes exporting to my image that I wanna place this photo into. Now, as we start, I'm gonna go straight down to my Sky AI and we're gonna go ahead and add this to our collection. I'm gonna click on the Sky Selection button and I'm gonna go up here to the top, make sure I'm in all skies. And if you wanted to add a sky one at a time, make sure you're in all skies, scroll down to the bottom of your list, and then click that plus button and navigate to it on your hard drive. The method that I prefer is instead of going to all skies, you're gonna click on that all skies menu and go down to show custom skies. And that's gonna bring you to your custom skies folder. Now in here you can see I have a lot of different folders with different collections that I've downloaded from the Skyland Marketplace. I also have a folder here at the top that I put underscore Angela Skies. So those I know are my own private skies that I've created. I put the underscore at the front just so it shows up at the top of the list. All right, so in that folder is where I want to put that Sedona Sunset. So I'm gonna open up one more finder window, go to my desktop, and grab that Sedona Sunset TIFF and just pop that in there, tell it I wanna move, yes, that's good. And now my new sunset is in my custom file. Now when I go into Luminar AI, I can go into my sky selection menu, quickly navigate to my Angela skies, and there is my new sky that I just created. All right, let's take a quick look here at the chat and see what we've got. Uh, it even says, what about saving it in both file types? You can absolutely do that. 
Nothing wrong with that method. All right, Leon, I'm glad you're enjoying the topic today. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Russ. Great to see everybody. All right, so let's go ahead and do a few edits here with this image just to finish things off. The reason I wanted to show this was, like I said at the beginning, I had, you know, those beautiful bluebird skies with not a cloud to be seen except for that first night in Sedona. So this is where that sky that I took from a similar location on a different night comes in real, really handy. It's also my own image, which means that when this image is complete, this is 100% my own work, which when I'm making my own images for my portfolio, to me, that's really important. Um, there's nothing wrong with using skies that you've purchased or downloaded, but I like to have things be my own. So I'm gonna go back up to the top here and just do a few quick edits. We're gonna use our Axon AI, pull that up a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of structure. There we go. And I'm also going to crop this. Now you'll see here at the foreground, there's just, there's not a whole lot interesting happening here. Everything interesting is now the sky. And I believe this is Courthouse Butte out in Sedona. So I'm going to change this to a 16 by nine, pull that up and maybe even pull this in a little bit tighter. And we can pull that over a little bit there, give it a little bit more of perspective. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. And then I'm going to hit return on my keyboard to commit that crop. Okay, now from there, I can go back down to my Sky AI and tweak this a little bit so it blends perfectly with my image. I'm gonna start with Sky Orientation. Click on that Horizon Position button. You'll notice when, that, when you click that button, you go back to your full uncropped image. There's nothing wrong with that. Just kind of keep in mind that that's what happens. I'm gonna spread out that transition and pull that dot line down a little bit further. That looks good. Close that up by clicking the Horizon Position button again. And then I can adjust the vertical position, which is going to be the up and down, or I can choose to adjust the horizontal position, which I think is actually very powerful here because it scales the clouds and moves them in a really interesting way. So you can kind of fill in some of that open space. And I think that actually right about there looks cool because now we can see more of those oranges and pinks. Really, really pretty. All right, from there, I'm gonna go down to, let's see here, scene relighting. And I'm gonna bring up my real light strength really high. And you'll see that that's darkening my foreground and kind of bringing in more of the tones from the sky and it's making the whole image a little bit more believable. I'm also gonna bring in that real light saturation. This is important because we've changed the color of the sky. If you're going from a blue sky to a blue sky, you can typically turn off the real light. But when you're putting in a really colorful sky on an image that had a blue sky, those colors in the image are now very different and as is the quality of the light. So you wanna make sure you bring up that relight saturation to bring in some of those tones from that sky. I might even bring up that relight strength a little bit more and that's starting to look really, really good. I can also go to my sky adjustments, adjust the focus, the grain. I typically like to add a little bit of atmospheric haze. It just looks a bit more natural to me. You can adjust the warmth. I'm gonna leave that alone and you can lighten or darken that sky as desired. So that's looking pretty good. I like what's happening there. I think the final thing I wanna do is go back up to my landscape tool and add a little bit of golden hour. And you'll see this is affecting the entire image, including our sky. So just make sure you don't take it too far because then some of these colors start to look unnatural. But I think overall, this is looking really, really good. Um, one last thing that I'm thinking I might do is this bit of the foreground is still a little bit too bright for my taste. The last thing we're gonna do here is go down to Dodge and Burn, choose Dark, and I'm gonna bring that strength down really low. I'm gonna use my bracket keys on the keyboard to make that brush size bigger. And then just gently brush in a little bit of extra darkness here over the foreground. I'm gonna go over it with several different strokes because that's kind of layering up that darkness. There we go. And be careful, like right here, you can see that I went a little bit overboard. So that's where I'm gonna take Erase and just kind of erase some of that. Um, go back to my darken. We'll give that another little swipe over so that looks a little bit more natural. There we go. So now this is looking pretty much the way I want it. I'm very happy with this result. You can do further edits, further creative edits, or further tweaking of the tones if you like. But this is kind of the basic steps I take when I'm A, capturing a sky by itself that I plan to use as a sky replacement. How I prepare that sky and then how I would put that to use to make an image 
that even though this sky wasn't there on this day, this complete image is 100% my own. Um, if you're working with camera clubs and submitting your images for competition, check your club's rules because I know in the club that I belong to, having an image that's 100% yours is one of the rules. You can composite things all day long, but all of those elements have to be of your own creation. So this is a great way to be able to implement and bring in and organize some of those elements for your future use. I hope you guys liked this episode and got some good information out of it. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.